Why are cryptocurrencies a trend in the realm of Islamic finance? Join us today as we explore the role and potential of blockchain technology in Islamic finance. Welcome to the CF Talk podcast, a place to learn and explore through conversations in Islamic and ethical finance with experts from all over the world. Stay tuned as we dive in the fascinating world of finance together. First of all, thanks uh, for people that are connecting with us today. Thank you for attending to this uh, session of uh, CF Talks. Um, we remember that this session is going to be recorded for our uh, pod podcast series. And um, we will leave in the end 10 minutes in case there is a, a couple of questions. We will be replaying that. You can use the Q&A section on Zoom to... Um, to answer any of uh, of these questions and with this we 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 are going to get started right now so um welcome to a new edition of the cf talks and thank you for connecting with us i'd like to welcome our guest today joaquin matinero tor he's an associate lawyer of roca union and uh, member of the regulatory board at the crypto valley association and collaborator of the european central bank expert on Web3 and cryptocurrencies. And uh, thank you very much, Joaquin, for being with us today in this podcast. Thank you very much, Jose Maria, for this opportunity. Thank you very much for this year. And I hope that this talk will be interesting for anyone that is hearing us. Yes, yeah, I'm sure it's really interesting about, about the conversations we've been having before. Um, today, we're going to be talking about uh, blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies, and the potential on Islamic financial markets. Cryptocurrencies are quite controversial, actually, in Islamic economy because many scholars are declaring them haram. But on the other hand, we have many people that are defending that they have a great potential on the development of Islamic finance. So, I mean, jumping straight to the, the point, uh, <laughs> what makes a cryptocurrency Sharia compliant? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, blockchain technology and cryptocurrency for the past five to seven years have been dealing with several issues with Islamic countries. They are trying to defend that they were not Sharia compliant. Nowadays, they start moving towards that they are compliant in several issues. One of the most important is about utility. There's a cryptocurrency that it's 100% directly for the utility of that token that gives a benefit to the community, it's 100% Sharia compliant. What it's against that is there's this token is used for money laundering, terrorism, or any other casinos, for example, and uh, not for speculative reasons. In this case, it would not be Sharia compliant and could never be uh, dealt with Islamic uh, principles. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So in your opinion, like what, what are these fundamental features that we need to take in mind to design uh, Islamic cryptocurrency? How yeah the, differently to uh yeah well yeah, first of all it's technology and when we talk about technology how we structure this token uh gives sense it can be dealt under the islamic principles of that we have to structure a token that will be 100 percent related as we mentioned before 100 percent right for its utility for one thing commonly that we can use it for that reason and that's not give any speculative point of view we've seen in the, the state the security exchange commission they are looking really really narrowing to any token in this case we're gonna start to base it on the islamic principles there are several examples this the this islamic coin that is working to be used as a attacker fault in a near future so it's interesting and also the stable coin that if it's anyone it's not related with cryptocurrency it's just cryptocurrency pledged to one dollar or one euro it's 100 share compliant so before starting to that we have to ensure that our token will be 100 uh, executed as a utility token and in this case i think it will not be a problem to be compliant hmm. Okay, so probably that's some of the strategies that some of the Islamic currencies that we are seeing um, uh, being born in, in different countries, um, mostly in the Middle East. And uh, so I wanted to ask you about these markets and uh, how, how are these markets growing and what, what are the main, first of all, like what are the main Islamic crypto hubs and what is the evolution that you have seen over the last uh, few years? 
As, as we pointed out uh, at the beginning, uh, there were no crypto Islamic finance hubs at all. Everyone was uh, based in the States, were based in the Caribbean, in South Asia. But how? But two years ago, the things are start moving towards that uh, public administration were accepting. And one of these big, big hubs, it's Dubai, based in the United Arab Emirates, that they decided that every single transaction between public administration will be based in blockchain. So uh, we already know that it's a big Islamic finance uh, industry in the country. But nowadays, it's becoming more and more and lots of crypto projects or Web3 projects are basically in Dubai. Also, we got a really important hub in Malaysia, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, first, uh, Malaysia decided that not accepting cryptocurrency at all. But three years ago, they changed their mind, as we mentioned it, for utility tokens. Mm -hmm. uh, outside, the middle, outside Middle East and South Asia, we got London. London is not in the European Union anymore, but we know that it's really close or uh, really well connected with the Emirates uh, because I think it was in 2021, the first Sukuk was used by the UK government. So it's really interesting how UK companies are trying to issue tokens also linked to the Islamic finance. And finally, we got Saudi Arabia, as we must know, they are really, really interested for the 2030. It's becoming the biggest hub or, a try, or trying to become the one of the biggest hubs of the world at this at this year. And we got domestic um, hubs as Doha in Qatar and Jakarta in Indonesia. They are also interested in accepting and using blockchain technology, not only for traceability or issuing a token, also for their own benefits. They think the charity uh, products or crowdfunding uh, will be necessary for transparency. That's one of the biggest principles in Islamic finance. There will not be anyone that take money from what they has to be sent. So it's interesting how these big, big hubs are moving from the tra traditional Islamic uh, finance towards blockchain technology and future Web3 projects. No, it's interesting. And actually, I I see that you're, what you're saying, that there's more... Um... There's more official support these days, right? I mean, even I think like for many years, governments were kind of worried about losing control on monetary policy due to um, these new technologies. But now they are kind of embracing it and uh, taking advantage and uh, talking about these digital currencies or digital uh, official versions on, of the of our own currencies on the digital version, right? 100% agree. Uh, we've seen uh, since the pandemic, uh, Dubai uh, has uh, well has accepted most blockchain project and most blockchain companies like Polygon, Ethereum, the uh, biggest companies that were based in Switzerland, but nowadays they are moving towards Dubai, not only to have uh, better professionals due to tax uh, provision, but also to increase their position. Uh, several metaverse companies are also in Dubai, and the government uh, has decided, I think it, in 2026, there will be the whole administration paperless, and every single transaction will be used by blockchain technology to certify that has been approved or not but uh, trying to link with that technology is here to stay that could be 100% share compliant if they has been created in in with these principles uh, we've seen it in the past if we create a product based with certain principles it could happen in north america and south asia in scandinavia mm -hmm. if you, you technology is for everyone and it's global but it has to be adapted to the current situation to have been successful. And I think they are doing great, not only Dubai, uh, we pointed also in Doha, Jakarta, and other Islamic hubs, they are, have seen that this technology is not for or against the principle. It's there, it's here to stay, like internet. So we have to figure out which is the best position and how to deal with several problematics or ban certain provisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting times we're living. We will see on the on the coming <laughs> years what's uh, what's gonna be the trend. Um, now, I mean, we I would like to move a bit out of cryptocurrencies by themselves and and then talk about uh, blockchain technology. Uh, I know that you've been working on many different projects on them using blockchain technology, and um, I would like to ask you how do you see this. Um, this technology helping the development of Islamic finance, like the, the, the application of blockchain is 
changing the way that uh, Islamic finance is conducted these days, right? Yeah, well, uh, we've seen that the most population now they got one or two cell phones at home, and sometimes they could not access to the bank account. You do have no internet, or they it's a it's a holiday on that. So blockchain technology allows you to transfer not only money but also digital assets that could be used for certain parties. Also, with certain um, products that we've talked in the past, like Suku or like charities funds uh, with blockchain technology will emerge and will be bigger and bigger. So people that need to fulfill with this uh, charity because uh, the, the own principle, or own beliefs uh, are really, really strong to do it in that way. It's necessary to find a solution that technically uh, it's 100% sure that you can manage from a any single part of the world and you will be 100% sure that this transaction has been executed, has been sent directly to the fund that after that will be sent it, and also for the TACA full pro products, we've seen it that it's necessary that uh, will be tracked, that no one can take that money out of this uh, main objective. So people could trust technology, not all institutions, and institutions are purely, but sometimes you cannot trust there are certain intermediaries, third parties that could take a little bit of this or a little bit of that, that it's hard missing the principles of the Islamic finance. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely making, um, changing the rules of the game for, for all the banking sector this day. So it makes sense that when we are talking about reducing intermediaries, reducing fixed costs, it will open uh, a lot of opportunities. It is, but also uh, from my point of view, I remember when I started studies, uh, I studied before Islamic finance, before blockchain technology I started in 20, 2008, uh, Islamic finance principles and blockchain technology are quite linked to that principle. There's no need that to pay to a third party to obtain yeah. a loan. It's everything. It's connected. It's more cooperative. Uh, it's more ethical and also DeFi. It's another level. It's a uh, decentralized finance. It brings us the opportunity to the Islamic principles and the Sharia principles to be connected with technology and people that do not believe or do not have um, understood this principle will be using this technology because it's easier and bring us more collective, uh, more powerful solutions. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if that's the case, why we are not seeing even more growth? Like, I mean, what are the challenges that we have ahead for the development of this of this industry i think that as you say it right banks sometimes are afraid of innovation we've seen it in the latest 80s uh, internet transactions had took almost uh, 15 to 20 years to become a reality i think that banks have to understand that they could do what they have doing the best as investing but there are several products that nowadays could be 100 percent automatized and, and with this technology people will be connected and it could be audited and that's it's really important because if you can audit all the transaction it's one of the principles that everyone is 100 percent sure that it has been executed the way it has to be executed but you have to understand that FinTech technology, blockchain technology, big data, artificial intelligence are here to stay. We have to understand that it's something that will be created an enormous market and banks will be also benefit for that because if you want to hold your uh, digital uh, tokens or your cryptocurrencies or whatever, a certificate, banks have to be the ones that will be our keeper because mm -hmm. we, we have to be sure that this technology has a lot of benefits, that also there are several risks and technology risk. You have to take in mind that if you lose them, you lose it forever. And that it has already happened with cryptos. So I think that uh, it's an important moment. Things are moving towards you in the European Union. We got a new regulation that's called MICA. It has been approved two months ago or more or less. So I'm sure in the Middle East will happen the same. In Singapore, they have been doing amazing things uh, with uh, central bank digital currencies. And I have no doubt that in the following two to five years will be a global acceptance of this technology, also financial products. So that will become a reality and banks will be accepting because they have nothing to say about it. 
Mm -hmm. So what would you say now it would be like uh, in the coming future, in the next two, three, four years, where do you see more opportunity of growth? And especially like thinking as a, as yourself, as a, as a lawyer in, here in Spain, uh, whereas uh, our listeners can be business people, lawyers or, uh, or academics, who, um, what are the opportunities or what, where should we looking at in the future? Well, for the well, in the following years, I think that one of the main issues will be what it's called the central bank digital currencies. There are currencies issued by central banks. There are more than a hundred central banks that are studying that. We've seen it the first war in Bahamas, but also we got it in Nigeria. Also, the euro dollar. Uh, they are working to that. The digital euro will become a reality in the following two to three years. So this will be really interesting because it's programmable money that will be sent to certain people. If, for example, nat natural disasters, diseases, uh, problematic AIDS. So Islamic finance will be quite linked to that because it has the 100% the meaning. So I think that businesses will be quite related. And once uh, central bank digital currencies will be on the road and everyone will be easy to take it, will be linked to cryptocurrencies and also to any other project. So I think it's what businessmen will be taking into account that banks are here to say, for sure they have lots of meanings, but also there are new industries, web three industries, the new products uh, related to finance that are necessary because technology, as we said, are here to stay. So we have to embrace this technology, make it to adapt to our principles and belief, and that will be a massive success. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I would like to know more about this. Uh, how how things are going to change with this uh, central central bank um, digital currencies? It's a uh, very interesting, <laughs> intriguing from my point of view. It is really interesting, but it's also really hard because uh, some people are against to that. They think that cash will disappear forever or any single transaction will go to the shop to buy a uh, water and some, I would say, some baklavas. Uh, people think that they will be tracked and everyone will know when you buy it and how you buy it now. Uh, these mm. privacy uh, issues will be dealt and I'm sure that that will not happen as it has already happened with digital yuan in China, that everything is struggled. But on the other hand, I'm really happy that if I receive an aid or some money because I, my house will be destroyed by a natural disaster, I only can use this money for the reconstruction of that house. I, I could not go for a holiday. I can spend into a mm -hmm. new car. And I, it's really interesting because that makes sense how money Uh, that we receive in certain occasion, I use it in that benefit or in that sense that it's make 100% logical. So I think that we find out a perfect combination of both worlds. And the next year, we're not going to be talking about cryptocurrencies tokens will be the same. We'll pay with your phone, with your smart watch or whatever. And you never know where, how you're paying that. You pay that. Okay. It's fine. I think that it's uh, the most exciting development that we're going to see it. Well, it's interesting. And also it's, it's good to see a um, kinder side of cryptocurrencies because they are usually related more to speculation and, and gambling than uh, social development. That That's what... Uh, yeah, well, uh, that also that also happened in the past. We've seen it that internet in the beginning it will be only for money laundering and terrorism things and mm -hmm. things that has not been sure. The same happened with cryptocurrency. People are afraid of changes and sometimes the first reaction that humans got it, it's being afraid of being against innovation. I'm sure that several crypto projects has not been good and has become Ponzi schemes. But on the other way around, their project really interesting. They are working really hard. They give solution that has not been there because there were no one that were providing them. And this technology that certifies in time, that got a time stamp, that it's 100% auditable and it's also pseudonym. It makes sense for what's going on. We're moving everywhere in the in the world. No matter if you're having a watch or you're 
getting your shoes, but you always have your cell phone on your hand. So it's necessary to have a new kind of money, new kind of financial products that bring us uh, new opportunities. So I'm sure that the digital identity uh, will become a reality in the following three to four years that everyone will be identified uh, on the cyberspace so we can create more and more products. It's a really exciting future to come. <laughs> so, uh, and as yeah, yeah, as many people say, like I mean, in the end, technology is agnostic. I mean, it, it, we can make it evil or good depending on the use that we are <laughs> giving to it. So uh, that's that's hundred percent true. Uh, technology is not for or against anyone. Technology has only been created by people that knows how to program. The same is happening now with artificial intelligence. If they're going to destroy our jobs or they're going to create, I would say, uh, uh, something evil. No. Okay. We got uh, artificial intelligence. We have to deal with that. Have to create a uh, certain uh, barriers that could not be crossed but for the benefit of the humanity. I think that all this technology will be good in one on some point, but we have to work on that on the course. Uh, think about which are our red lines. And once we got our red lines, we can start creating uh, new solutions, new products that everyone will benefit for sure. And we said before, in the next four or five years, no one will ask if there's blockchain technology in your phone or if you're using internet. Nobody is asking nowadays, uh, have you sent this email using internet? Nobody asked that. Because mm. people assume there's a kind of technology saying the same will happen when you send something with your phone or your computer or whatever. Nobody will ask you, have you sent it via your bank or have you sent it through a token? I think that it's something that we're going to at least um, giving a solution and will not be used anymore. Well, Thank you very much. It's been uh, really interesting, <laughs> this conversation. Well, we can, we can talk for ages if you yes. want to, but I, I am sure that people had a lot to do this Absolutely. morning. So uh, if there's any questions about yeah. it, uh, please feel free. And Jose, Maria and me, we can answer if they yes. are not so difficult. <laughs> Yeah, we if if there's any questions, you can write them either in the chat or in the Q and A um, in the Q and A section, and we we have time to answer a couple of questions. And uh, otherwise, we will be sending you the recording when the podcast is completed, and we we will be sharing it online as well. So um, I think. Maybe we have explained it perfectly crystal clear <laughs> and there's no question at all. Uh, I'm joking. I'm sure that's a lot of questions, but um, people, it's busy those days. So mm -hmm. I totally understand there will not be any questions to that. Anyways, you um, you can always, um, if we can always be connected online. So uh, <laughs> so any anyone that is interested, we can put you in contact with... Uh, with Joaquin and we can um, we can stay connected online. I think we have um, we have a question here. And uh, oh, so uh, Reda here is asking us, what do you think about Binance being banned in Belgium? Well, uh, I think it's more, um, I would say, from the custody part, people are really really interested about how big big player exchanges will be linked to and how they could provide uh, an auditing of funds so the belgian government is looking for that the states government also against coinbase and binance they are looking i'm not if one day binance will be banned in a country would say in belgium france spain italy whatever uh, they will have like a transitory period to send the funds to other exchange based in the European Union in this case. So I will not be afraid of that. If they are not in Belgium, they could not uh, make a directly marketing, but you can go to the Binance exchange in France and you can trade your cryptos from one city to another. I think that uh, will be 100% uh, solved with MICA regulation that will bring us a harmonized regulation from the 27 member states in the European Union. So I think it's more political reasons or regulators moving towards that to uh, 
ask more information about Binance Financial's uh, statement, but I'm not I'm not worried about it. Uh, blockchain is worldwide, and one way or the other will be all the customers protected and will bring a solution for sure. Okay. We have one question on the chat, and it's, could you please share your view on the general question about the permissibility of Bitcoin blockchain related activities from an Islamic perspective? Because there are different statements from our respective scholars in Malaysia and the GCC. Well, Bitcoin, it's quite uh, difficult to understand because people understand Bitcoin from a uh, digital gold. And on the other way around, people decide that it's a security token or a payment token. So it depends on the perspective that will be complying or not complying with the Sharia. With blockchain activities, uh, we mentioned it before, if they are used uh, for the benefit of the community, non-economical exposure for uh, great volatility and uh, not speculation, I'm sure that most Islamic economic hubs will accept that this technology would be used for good, but we have to structure in that way. Hmm. Yeah, I think the, the controversy is going to stay there for a while, <laughs> the different opinions. Sure, that will may not be solved in a fortnight. It will take longer, but once we got Dubai, we got Qatar, we got uh, Malaysia, also we got, uh, it's not Islamic, but Singapore it's, has a strong uh, potential related to the uh, Islamic uh, finance in South Asia. Once it's more or less uh, at least accepted, it will bring us a huge uh, regulation, more or less similar, that bring us solutions to every single problematic. Yeah, yeah, we need to wait for maturity. Let's say, like, uh, we're still in a very early stage of, of these technologies. Well, uh, thank you very much. I think we don't have time for more questions. So I'm just going to finish here the session today. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Joaquin, for joining us today. It's been a very interesting conversation. Um, I'm sure that if we talk in six months, things will have evolved again. <laughs> so we can keep the conversation I, open. I, I, I think it will be necessary six months later to say it. what we said uh, in the <laughs> beginning of July. It's total rubbish. It's nothing at all. We're going to explain it again. Now, yeah. I'm sure that things will be evolving, that things will be changing. But we've seen it that and people say in the ecosystem, one year in the blockchain ecosystem is more like seven years in the current world. And it's true. And it says things are moving really, really fast. Sometimes in three months, a big, big company starts and then fall in mind it's technology that has several issues to be addressed. But once we have a deal with that, it will have a major impact. Yeah, well, we will stay with that sentence. Like, let's wait <laughs> in one year and uh, let's see the huge evolution of all this. Thank you. And um, to all our listeners, I'll see you on the next session of, uh, of the CF Talks. And uh, yeah, stay connected. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome, Jose Maria. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.